Navies are built to control the seas and you better have the right equipment on board or someone might sink your battleship. During World War II, some of the most massive, most impressive ships were constructed only to collect barnacles at the bottom of the sea after receiving a heavy dosage of firepower. Today, we'll take an in-depth look at some of the most powerful World War II battleships and the fate that they would suffer. But first, thanks Alan for leaving us this comment in our most insane main battle tanks video. The French Leclerc is a great machine that we forgot to put on our list. Let us know which warship we forgot to mention and maybe we'll feature you in an upcoming video. Number 11. The Dunkirk Class Designed to take on some impressive ships built by the Third Reich, the Dunkirk class was France's attempt at putting a dent into the invading naval forces and to protect their vast coastlines. They were relatively smaller than most rival ships, only displacing about 26,500 tons. They were equipped with eight 13-inch guns, two quadruple 130mm guns, and two 130mm turrets. They could reach a max speed of 33 miles an hour at 29.5 knots with four stream gear turbines. It would go through a few changes, including a 46-meter rangefinder, which was installed in 1940. It would never encounter the German fleet it was intended to fight against and suffered a strange fate. After Germany had conquered France, the British were worried that the ships would be used against them and they actually opened fire on the attack at Mers Kabir in Algeria on the 3rd of July 1940. The attack on the Dunkirk is still somewhat controversial today and the entire French fleet was sunk, leaving 1,297 dead while the British only suffered two casualties. Number 10. Congo Class one of the more successful warships of the Imperial Japanese Navy was the first ship of the class, a battlecruiser named Congo. It was thought to be one of the most heavily armed ships during the World War I era and would make some serious upgrades in 1935. This almost made it into an entirely new ship. The frame was upgraded to increase her speed and power capabilities. It made a little bit of a trade lacking in armor but making up for it in speed. Being able to displace 36,000, it was armed to the teeth with its main battery consisting of eight 14-inch heavy caliber naval guns and four twin turrets. It was capable of firing explosive rounds nearly 20 miles. It featured 16 50 caliber guns that were used against enemy personnel or enemy aircraft if necessary. Don't forget about eight torpedo tubes to use against submarines or other ships in the area. Even though it had many good weapons, it was overpowered by the USS Sea Lion submarine after being hit with six torpedoes about 63 miles off the coast of Taiwan. Number 9. South Dakota Class Battleship Four fast battleships made up the South Dakota class built by the good old U.S. Navy. According to treaties, they were only able to reach a toll of 35,000 tons of water displacement and was considered to be one of the best classes that followed the international agreements made after the First World War. But not every country followed this rule. After Japan was caught breaking the rule, the U.S. and the U.K. eventually agreed that 45,000 was fair and we'll cover some of those ships later on. The main battery consisted of nine total 16-inch guns as well as 16 5-inch 38 caliber Mark 12 guns. The four battleships were all named after states including Massachusetts, Indiana, South Dakota, and Alabama. If you got time, you can actually walk on the USS Alabama that's been retired in the Mobile River. This particular ship, the USS Alabama, is back in its home state and was one of the most prolific battleships that shot down dozens of Japanese aircraft during World War II without ever even receiving a scratch in return. But ironically enough, it's a South Dakota class battleship. Number 8. North Carolina Class Since it appeared that no one else was really going to follow the treaty, especially Japan, the North Carolina class is notorious for going over the 35 ton limit by over about 10,000 tons. This was at full load and increasing the size of so the guns went to 16 inches, also defying the treaty. The armor was upgraded to protect against 14 inch guns, making some believe we were actually the first one to break the treaty and not Japan. In any case, the large amount of firepower that was being held on board could produce damage never seen before. With muzzle velocities coming in at 2,300 feet per second and they were able to fire at a target up to 22 miles away. It was now able to fire the 2,700 pound Mark 8 armor piercing shell that was developed by the Bureau of Ordnance. It participated in many great stages in the Pacific including the Marianas Turkey Shoot where the US was able to take out a large number of Japanese aircraft at a low cost. The class consisted of two ships including the North Carolina which is currently being held and maintained as a museum. It also includes the Washington which was eventually sold and scrapped. Number 7. The HMS Hood This was the last battle cruiser of the British Royal Navy and even though it was built in 1916, it was still the pride and joy of the sailors who traveled around the world in it. 
Built as a cruiser, it lacked armor, but made up for it in speed, being able to move at a speed of 35 miles an hour or 30 knots. The HMS Hood measured 896 feet long and was often in patrol in the Atlantic, hoping to disrupt trade routes with Iceland and the Norwegian Sea. It carried some heavy weaponry as well, including eight 15-inch MK1 guns that can shoot a 1,920-pound projectile. It hit a target about 17 miles away. Its secondary armament consisted of a dozen 50 cal MK1 machine guns. The HMS Hood had the honor of destroying the French fleet we mentioned earlier during the Merce El Kabir harbor attack. It's fairly well known for being the victim of another ship that sank it during the Battle of the Denmark Strait, which we'll get to more on later. Number 6. King George V the ships that made up the King George V class comprises of the HMS King George, the Prince of Wales, Duke of York, Anson, and the Howe. These were built only a few years later before 1939, almost as if they knew that they'd be used in the future. It featured 10 14-inch Mark VII guns and 16 QF 5.25-inch MK1 DP guns. The King George class also made an appearance to the Battle of the Denmark Strait, and two of the ships were sent to locate the German Bismarck, who destroyed the HMS Hood. They were still lucky to make it out alive. A few of the ships were also deployed to the Far East to recapture land taken by the Japanese Imperial Army. They were consistently used to either provide escort for merchant ships or to bombard enemy targets. The Prince of Trelles eventually sank during an air raid attack in the Southeast China Sea. Number 5. Litorio being Italy's most modernized battleship during World War II, the Littorio-class battleship was used extensively in the Mediterranean Sea. They built three power battleships capable of hitting 30 knots and came in at over 41,000 tons. Overall, they measured 780 feet long and were equipped with nine 15mm guns, 12 6-inch guns, and four 120mm guns. It consisted of three ships, the Littorio, Vittorio Veneto, and the Roma. These were the big dogs of the Italian Navy, but they proved to be vulnerable from the skies. After Italy signed an armistice, the Allies had captured the boats. Similar to how the French had their ships sunk by an ally, the Italians had their ships sunk by the German Allies in an attempt to keep them out of the hands of the Americans and the British. Number 4. The Fuso The Fuso seemed to be one of the more treaty-friendly class battleships and was equipped with 14-inch guns and displaced around 35,000 tons of water. The Fusa was first decommissioned in 1915 and patrolled off the coast of China for a bit until it was modernized between 1930 to 1935. It was then upgraded again from 1937 to 1941. Improvements included upgrades in armor and propulsion machinery. Its armor was 12 inches thick and turrets were protected with 11 tall inches. The Fuso served briefly during World War II during the Pearl Harbor attack and during the Midway Island operation. It quickly sank as Americans got the last laugh, sinking the ship in less than 40 minutes with torpedo bombers. Some claim that one torpedo hit an ammo storage that ripped the ship in half. Number 3. The Yamato These two Japanese battleships were the heaviest battleships ever made and could display 72,800 tons. Just because it was big didn't mean that this thing couldn't move quickly either. It could still get around at a speed of roughly 27 knots or 31 miles an hour. Named after the ancient Japanese province of Yamato, they were basically mocking the treaty requirements at this point. They were hoping that size would be more important than quantity because the U.S. vastly outnumbered them in battleships. It had several large 46cm cannons that could attack quite a few enemy boats at one time. It carried 24 25mm guns that were used to take out any enemy planes. The Yamato and its sister ship actually did not see much action though because the Japanese were hoping to keep its design a secret for a long time and it was more commonly used as a transportation barge. The large vessel currently lays at the bottom of the sea about 180 miles or 290 kilometers southeast of Kyushu. Number 2. Iowa Class The Iowa Class battleship was possibly the best class of battleship available to the U.S. during World War II and they are capable of displacing 57,000 tons of water. It contained nine 16-inch naval cannons, 25-inch 28 cal guns, and other stuff. Something a little bit more powerful was needed in case the Nazis sailed a little bit too far east, and this was their answer. They were so good that they were even upgraded during the Cold War and Korean War. It consisted of six different ships, which all made it out of the war in one piece. This included the Iowa, the New Jersey, the Missouri, the Wisconsin, Illinois, and Kentucky. Used primarily at the end of the war, it was the extra advantage the Allies needed to gain control of the Far East. Offensive operations included the conflict at Iwo Jima and Okinawa. But before we get to our number one, we'd like to hear your thoughts on battleships and the importance they play in today's style of combat. With so many advanced airplanes and missiles we have in modern times, are these big megaships still necessary? 
Let us know in the comments section and maybe we'll feature you in an upcoming video. And number one, the Bismarck. The Bismarck and its sister ship, the Tirpitz, were the largest battleships built by Germany and the largest by any European power. It was named after the Chancellor Otto von Bismarck, who was responsible for unifying Germany in 1871. It carried a reputation of being the biggest, baddest ship out there. It turned out not to be too invincible though from the skies by any means, and the British sent flurries of torpedo bombers known as Swordfish. The Bismarck proved strong during battle during the Battle of the Denmark Strait, where it destroyed two Allied cruisers and forced another one to retreat. It's also one of the biggest ships to get destroyed during World War II and is well known for its downfall. While the Bismarck was stationed near Brest, France, the British were seeking revenge on this behemoth. A crew of British torpedo bombers took off from an aircraft carrier and damaged it badly enough to slow it down. A warship came in to finish the job, but it wouldn't be easy. The Bismarck was doomed and eventually finished off May 27, 1941. So what'd you guys think of that video? Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel and maybe we'll feature you in an upcoming video.